It's a great pleasure to welcome you to the Hannah Siegel Memorial Conference this evening uh, and tomorrow. This conference celebrates Hannah Siegel's life and work following her death in 2011. I'd already been made aware of her reputation when I was looking for an analyst and went to see her in 1967. Friends offered advice, and even those who warned me against climbing could not disguise their respect for her. Someone gave me her book, Introduction to the Work of Melanie Klein, in which Klein's ideas were clarified and illustrated through clinical material from Siegel's own patients. Later, I was to appreciate that this was a brilliant account of Klein's theories, but at that time, I confess, it was not of much help. After more inquiries and some confused reading, I decided to trust Henry Ray, my teacher at the Maudsley Hospital, who was unequivocal in his recommendation. An early, an early setback occurred when Dr. Siegel told me that her fee was four guineas because I knew that my friend Sandy Bourne, who had just finished analysis with her, had paid only two guineas. <laughs> when I questioned the fee, she simply suggested that if money was a problem, I could go and see Miss Joseph. <laughs> Had a I feel moved as I recall memories of my meetings with Hannah Siegel and the influence that she had on my life as a psychoanalyst and on my work, especially during the 80s when she came to Geneva on a regular basis. For many of us, her presence was a decisive factor, not only because she turned Marcel Spira's group into a more cohesive unit, but also because she helped new generations of psychoanalysts to become more familiar with Kleinian concepts and to value them. This paper is a response to Hannah Siegel's inspiring paper Joseph Conrad and the Midlife Crisis, in which she discusses three of Conrad's most famous stories. Heart of Darkness, which I won't touch upon here, The Secret Shadow, and most especially The Shadow Line. She links her ideas with Elliot Jackson's work on death and the midlife crisis. She draws on her brilliant paper on aesthetics, which she presented to the British Psychoanalytical Society in 1947, when she was 29 years old. In the seminal paper, which remains central to Klein and understanding of creativity, she says, I have quoted Proust at length because he reveals such an acute awareness of what I believe is present in the unconscious of all artists, namely that all creation is merely a recreation of a once loved and once whole but now lost in ruined internal world and self. It is when the world within us is destroyed, when it's dead and loveless, when our loved ones are in fragments and we ourselves in helpless despair, it is then that we must recreate our world anew, reassemble the pieces, infuse life into dead fragments, recreate life. Nicola Abelhirsch, I uh, edited Hanker's last book and um, just wanted to say something, sorry, I'm upset, <laughs> rather briefly about her papers. She would look at things we'd worked on and she would say, but it has to have punch. She was determined that all her papers had to have punch, that when you read them, they would get hold of you. Uh, and you would have an experience of them. So. Once she asked me to collect her in Paris because she had gone there for a clinical seminar and she knew I was in Paris at that time. 
In the taxi going to La Garde du Nord, where we had to take the Eurostar back to London, and keeping in mind that everybody who travelled with Anka knows how anxious about times, etc., she could be, she nevertheless told me, Ricardo, I realise we have still some time to go and have a bouillabaisse. I know a restaurant near La Garde du Nord. And I jokingly added, well, it is like we have still time for a clinical session as in our seminars. And she answered, of course, mental food does not exclude the joy for the real one. Do not forget that. We went there and ordered the bouillabaisse. But at one moment, I realized we were running out of time and in danger of missing the train. And I stood up and went to pay the bill. Suddenly, I heard the voice of the owner very kindly but firmly saying, Madame, s'il vous plaît, le bol. Madame, please, the bow. Bowl. Hanka was nearly running out of the restaurant with the bowl where she has still some appetizing pieces of the bouillabaisse. She was fishing them out, so to speak, happily holding the bowl like a child. For Hannah Siegel, more than anyone else working within the Kainium framework, has demonstrated the relevance of psychoanalytic ideas to human knowledge in general. Her papers on aesthetic, symbolism, literature, socio-political issues have of course made fundamental and original contributions which have influenced intellectual life far afield from psychoanalysis per se. About her punchiness, we had given her a lift many years earlier to a funeral which was really terribly chilling. With, without religion, they just didn't seem to know how to manage it and it was ghastly. And as we came away, I said, this is awful. When it comes to me, I'm going to have a Jewish funeral. She said, quick as a flash, in that case, I'm not coming. <laughs>